Hello. It's my pleasure to be speaking with you today from the traditional and unceded territory of the Moscowian people. My name is Eugene Barsky, and I'm the head of UBC Libraries Research Commons. Today, I want to be speaking with you about Geodesy, which is the platform we developed to create geospatial discovery for Canadian research data. Geodesy is an open source discovery tool that allows our users to find open data from multiple Canadian repositories in a visual way. The results are driven by a map and we work with data that is geospatial in nature or simply associated with a location. We yeah, are su supporters and uh, provide complementary search to the Canadian Federated Research Data Repository or further. All our work has been open source and all our code is available for free for others to adopt. As we all know, working in a profession for a long time, data can be difficult to find. When we search for data about a specific place like a park in Northern British Columbia, using keywords is actually not easy. Here's the text below uh, that will allow us to search for a forest in Northern British Columbia. So here we use tons of synonyms and proximity operators, which is not ideal when you look for something very specific. Wouldn't it be great, we said that we could search for a specific area just by driving a map around it. And this is what ex exactly what Geodesy does. It allows us to find Canadian research data sets about a specific place by driving a map. I will just have one slide about Geodesy infrastructure. At this moment, in phase one, we are working with scholars portal dataverses, which are more than 60 various institutional dataverses for places like University of British Columbia, McGill University, University of Toronto, Waterloo, and others. We're extracting the data out of dataverses and taking it into our Geodesy middleware, the pipeline. We are in the back end. We are adding value by uh, cross-working the metadata into standardized uh, uh, format, but also uh, adding bounding boxes, which really drive geodesy. At, at the end, we ship the data into uh, our Geo Blacklight instance, where it's available for researchers to use. Geodesy is based on bounding boxes. Everything that we take in goes through our pipeline to generate those. We either take the bounding boxes that were entered by the depositors, but these are really few. Most of the bounding boxes we use are programmatically generated from either the geospatial files directly or from the place na name metadata that is available in, in the Dataverse files. Each geospatial file even if it comes uh, uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a bunch of files, we'll have its own landing page and we will connect those together in a linked record. The data sets that do not have coordinates, geospatial coordinates or geospatial file types will be uh, not eligible for the inclusion because they are not relevant to uh, the geospatial discovery. For instance, genomics data sets uh, uh, that do not have a specific metadata about the location will not, be, uh, will not be included. First, we'll try to uh, analyze the geospatial files using GDAO. If we, uh, we aren't unsuccessful, if we cannot extract the geospatial metadata out, we'll look at the bounding boxes uh, that are provided in the native interfaces like Dataverse. If we can extract the geospatial coordinates out, we will do so. And if not, we'll seek a, a pla a, a place names out of the country and states and cities that we discover in the metadata records. This is a quick overview of our metadata processes. The data we take from Dataverse 
goes into Geodesy's uh, metadata schema, where we crosswalk it into a standardized ISO metadata, ISO 19115. And those records we ship to Open Geo Metadata in GitHub for other institutions like Stanford or uh, University of Michigan to use in their uh, Geo Blacklight applications. But we also crosswalk it to Geo Blacklight schema metadata, which we use for discovery. In phase two, on, on which we are working right now, and it should be ready in the early spring, we are adding multiple other repositories into a Geodesy pipeline. And but we are doing so by uh, harvesting the metadata into a, a further harvester and doing a crosswalk from right there. This way, we do not have to develop a, a crosswalks from each native repository, such as CCAN or Dataverse. We just use further harvester as, a, uh, as, a, as our metadata source. I have mentioned further before, further is a federated research data repository for Canada, which is our discovery interface for Canadian research data. This is a place we expose more than uh, 60 various uh, data sources for Canadian institutions. Geodesy lives right within further and at this moment provides a complementary map-based search for geospatial data. I will be sharing a few slides just to give you a feel how it looks like, and then we will go and drive further in person. We allow to search Geodesy in two ways, either by a keyword, or most importantly, by a location where there is a map you can drive around and focus on a specific location to find research data associated with that location. For instance, when I drive my map over uh, 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 Northern British Columbia, I find multiple data sets that focus on that geographical area. Moreover, each data set will have its own landing page where we explain where we took the data, we allow to download it in a standardized ISO metadata format we allow access to the original uh, files, but also link it to various other uh, files that are connected to the study. If the data is geospatial in nature, you'll also display it on the map. Let's take a deep dive. As you listen to my presentation, feel free to go to, uh, or just Google Geodesy, or go to geo.further.ca, you can also access it from the Further's homepage. As I mentioned, Dataverse is our source of uh, data in this moment. So we are just a discovery interface. Everything we have in Geodesy platform is coming from uh, uh, Canadian Dataverses at this point. And in uh, uh, early spring, we'll have the entire further index, which includes more than 17 uh, uh, various repositories uh, included in our platform. Let's drive to Northern BC, draw a geographical area, and I want to find what kind of uh, research data can be found about this specific area. Interestingly, as I move my mouse over data sets, the locations will change. For instance, when I go to Great Bear Rainforest, the data that we are taking it from will be displayed in a map. Each data file is a landing page, which we, we allow to see from the, uh, from the Geodesy interface, but we also link it to um, connect it uh, uh, data sets that have the same uh, uh, that have the same connections to that area. Also, we allow to download a clean ISO metadata record for each data set. Look, it looks like this. Those XML file files allow other institutions to pick up and search our data right away from their geo blacklight interfaces.
if the data itself is geospatial in nature, we will allow to, uh, to uh, focus on the shape files, for instance, and display it right away in the um, landing page. For instance, I will grab one example where we can show how Canadian boreal forest is being displayed right into the landing page of the geodesy platform. At this point, our users can take that data and export into their uh, GIS applications or just use our platform to view the data. Of course, people can analyze the data by uh, uh, various place, granularity options, or by an institution, by a source where we take the data from. I'll go back to my presentation. Our next steps for the geodesy are to complete the integration with the entire further index to allow more than 70 various platforms, including Haikai, Haikai Institute, different CCANs uh, uh, from the provincial and federal government to be uh, in inserted into the geodesy pipeline. We also plan to complete the French translation of the user interface and contribute it back to the GeoBlockLight community. I would like to acknowledge and thank our great partners at the Portage Network, where we receive all our funding from the new digital research infrastructure organizations in Canada, or in short, NDRIO. We have been fortunate to work with multiple institutions and multiple teams uh, during the last two years. And I would like to acknowledge that we couldn't have done it without them. Thank you very much. I'm glad to, uh, uh, I will be happy to uh, see your questions uh, as they come, but also feel free to see our code and explanations and guides through our GitHub page. Thank you very much. <laughs>